Hello friends, this video on neat current electricity is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, with, with a quick recap of all the concepts of uh, current electricity, we will now look into some of the multiple choice questions uh, which have a lot of which have already been asked in the previous year's uh, medical entrance examinations. So let us start. Question number one. A potentiometer wire is 100 cm long and a constant potential difference is maintained across it. Question number one. A potentiometer wire is 100 cm long and a constant potential difference is maintained across it. Okay. Two cells are connected in series, first to support one another and then in opposite direction. The balance points are obtained at 50 cm and 10 cm from the positive end of the wire in the two cases. The ratio of EMFs is, okay, so here we have two different scenarios. So let us go scenario by scenario. So what is happening in case one? So in case one, the cells are in series. Right? So here the EMF, the equivalent EMF is equal to E1 plus E2 that is sum of the EMFs of the two cells and corresponding to this EMF the balancing point is 50 centimeters. Right? So basically this is E1 and corresponding to this E1 the balancing point L1 is this. Right? So 50 centimeter is L1. Now let us look at case 2. So in case 2, the cells are again in series, but they are in opposite direction. So therefore, the equivalent EMF will be E1 minus E2, right? You know, you, you remember we had discussed when the cells are connected like this, then the net EMF is E1 plus E2. But when the cells are connected in the opposite direction like this, then the net EMF is E1 minus E2. So exactly that's what we are doing here. So in this case, the net EMF would be E1 minus E2. And corresponding to this EMF, the balancing point is at 10 centimeter. So this is L2. So now, how do we compare EMFs in a potentiometer? So in a potentiometer, the ratio of the EMFs is equal to the ratio of the corresponding balancing points. So therefore, here we know the values of L1 and L2, right? But we do not know the values of E dash and E dash dash, right? So E dash can be written as E1 plus E2. E double dash can be written as E1 minus E2. So this is equal to L1 by L2. So L1 is 50 and L2 is 10. Or this can be written as E1. Now, we what do we need to find? So the end result that we want to calculate is E1 is to E2. So this is what we need to find out. Right? So we know E1 plus E2 by E1 minus E2. So how do we find E1 by E2? Simple. By using the concept of componendo and divinendo. Where what we do is numerator plus denominator divided by numerator minus denominator. Simple. That's the concept of componendo and dividendo, right? The same we have to do on the right hand side also. Numerator plus denominator divided by numerator minus denominator. So now here E2 and E2 will get cancelled in the denominator E1, E1 will get cancelled. So we get 2E1 divided by 2E2 this is equal to 60 by 40. So 60 by 40 is basically 6 by 4, which is equal to 3 by 2. So this 2 and 2 will get cancelled. So E1 by E2 is equal to 3 by 2. So we can say E1 by E2 is equal to 3 is to 2. So this is the correct option. So you see it was very simple. It is just that you need to understand the question well and do it step by step. So just understand it. Case 1, this is the scenario. Case 2, this is the scenario. And while solving, just think how better can you handle this equation to solve it. So componential dividendo concept is an easier way to solve this problem. Okay, let's move ahead to the next question. Question number 2. The potential difference VA minus VB between the points A and B in the given figure is. Okay, so here you have a, a part of the circuit. You have to find out the potential difference between point A 
and point B. Now, looking at this circuit, we see that the current which is AI is flowing from A, from point A. So due to this flow of current, there would be a voltage drop across the resistances, right? Now since the current is flowing from point A to point B, that itself shows that the potential at point A is greater than the potential at point B, right? That is why you have a potential difference and that is why the current is flowing, right? So we have to find out VA minus VB. Now the potential at this point is more than the potential at this point. How much more? That will be determined by the voltage drop across these resistances. Right? So the first we will calculate voltage drop across resistance 2 ohms. So that would be equal to I into R. So I into R. R is 2 ohms. Next will be the potential drop across the uh, resistance 1 ohm which will be equal to I into 1 ohm. Then is the potential this EMF of the cell right? because the cell is also having some EMF. correct? So then we will have E. So now if you calculate this, how much is the current flowing? The current flowing is 2 amperes. So this would be 2 into 2 plus 2 into 1 plus EMF is 3 volts. So this would be 4 plus 2 plus 3. So this is equal to 9 volts. So therefore the potential difference between A and B would be 9 volts. So this is the correct answer. Now did you understand the concept? Now here I, I, I explained it in a very logical way. Since current is flowing from A to B, that means there is a potential difference because of which the current is flowing. Now the moment current is flowing, there will be a potential drop across 2 ohm resistance. There would be a potential drop across 1 ohm resistance, right? So VA minus VB will be equal to the potential sum of the potential drop across these resistances plus this EMF. Now, you see, in, in a way, this is also in accordance with the Kirchhoff's law, which says that, you know, the net potential in a circuit is equal to the product of the currents and the, their respective resistances in the circuit. Right? So anyways, here you just need to understand it logically that since the current is flowing from A to B, there is a potential difference, there are potential drops across the resistances. So you need to consider all of that. Let's move on to question number 3. A filament bulb 500 watt 100 volts is to be used in a 230 ohm main supply. When a resistance R is connected in series, it works perfectly and the bulb consumes 500 watt. The value of R is. Okay, so for in, in order to understand the question, first of all you should draw a diagram. So it says that there is a bulb. Okay which is to be used in a 230 volt main supply. So let's say that this is 230 volt main supply. Okay. When a resistance R is connected in series, so a resistance R is connected in series with the bulb, it works perfectly and the bulb consumes 500 watt. So this bulb is consuming 500 watt power. So we have to calculate the value of this resistance R. So this is the value that we need, to collect, uh, we need to calculate and it is also given that this bulb is rated as 500 watt power consumption and 100 volts. So here in the question we are given the rated values on the bulb like the rated power, the value of the power which is rated on the bulb. So this is the power which is rated on the bulb like in that bulb it has been rated that the power of the bulb is 500 watt and the voltage of the bulb is 100 volts right so we have marked them as pb that is power of the bulb and vb which is voltage of the bulb now first step is to calculate the resistance of the bulb because the bulb would also have some resistance right now here power of the bulb is given as 500 watts voltage is given as 100 volts so therefore we know that power is equal to v squared by r therefore resistance of the bulb would be would be equal to vb squared by pb 
which is equal to 100 into 100 divided by 500. So this would be equal to 20 ohms. So 20 ohms is the resistance of the bulb. So now we will talk about the overall circuit. But before that, let us also talk about the current that would flow through the bulb. So the current through the bulb, let's denote that as I. So I will be equal to VB by RB, V by R, which is equal to 100 by 20, that is equal to 5 ampere. So 5 ampere current will flow through the bulb. So now the same amount of current would also flow through this external resistance R, right? Because the bulb and the external resistance, they are in series, right? So the same current will flow through both of them. Now let us talk about the overall circuit. So for the overall circuit, we can say that the net equivalent resistance of the circuit would be capital R plus resistance of the bulb because the resistance of the bulb and this external resistance R, they are in series, right? So this would be R plus 20 because resistance of the bulb is 20 ohms. So this is the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Now for this entire circuit, I into R equivalent will be equal to the potential difference across the circuit which is equal to 230 volts. So this will be equal to 230 volts. Now therefore, we can say that I into R plus 20 is equal to 230. So the value of I is 5. So 5 into R plus 20 is equal to 230. So now from this equation, we can say R plus 20 is equal to 230 divided by 5. So 5 into 46. So R is equal to 46 minus 20, which is equal to 26 ohms. So therefore, the value of the resistance R is 26 ohms. So C is the right option. So you see, these are not at all complicated. You know the basic things. You know Ohm's law. You know the relation between power and voltage, power and resistance. You just need to understand the problem. And the first and foremost thing is draw a circuit. So only when you draw a diagram, the understanding becomes clear. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.